Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Lee. So today this is a fundamental tutorial talking about export object with UV within geometry nodes. Because this is actually a long-standing problem that the people found that um, they would like to export their geometry objects to Unreal or Unity or whatever other software and they found that they lost their UV. So I've just checked you too, and I found that uh, very many more people are talking about this question, while there are tens of people who are asking this question. So this is pretty surprising to me. Even if there are people who are addressing this problem or proposing the solution, they are not using the methods proposed and implemented by developers. So today I think uh, it's time to address this. So here we in Blender, this is a very simple geometry in all three and a very simple shader nodes in which we are basically just instance a sphere on a grid with points of 9 and the set material node to add a material check the texture on the UV everything is simple but there will be an issue that if you try to add a real life instance maybe you will try to access its vertices or other things I don't know what you are going to do and you realize everything has been messed up this is actually because the UV attribute, if it goes to the spreadsheet, the UV attribute is not being recognized by the system or not recognized by texture coordinate in this case. So in the past, while I'm talking about UV within Blender, uh, I mentioned the solution is to use the attribute in order to read this attribute. So we type in UV map and take the vector in and the problem has been solved. Okay. However, if you try to export this system, the current exporting system, whether you're dealing with was the Alimbex, OBJ, FBX, none of these will actually work with generic attributes. In the future, it will, but for now, I haven't heard any news about this. Okay. So you have to use the method to make the system recognize this UV map. So here, let's duplicate these uh, geometry nodes objects. Uh, the reason to the duplicate is because we need to apply the geometry nodes modifier. Uh, when you try to export something, you must export. Uh, you must apply the modifier. Usually, it's done automatically if you try to export with OBJ or other files, and it will tell you that. Uh, uh, where is that? Geometry applies the modifier. So this is an automatic and unavoidable process. Even if you do not do that, the system will do that. However, in this case, we need to apply the modifier so that we can write on the attribute. So let's just apply this geometry nodes modifier. And within this uh, green tab, the mesh tab, then there will be two attributes being created. And there is no UV map. So this is what we're currently having. Okay. And our job is to convert this big UV map. Instead of in, as a generic attribute, we are going to convert that to a UV map attribute. Okay. So just so you know that uh, for now, that the texture coordinate is not uh, working before any conversion. But uh, as soon as we try to convert that to a UV map, then ta -da, everything is back. So this will happen as well when you're trying to export this geometry. Here you may wonder that uh, we have a tiny UV map within attributes as well. Why don't we use that? Uh, the reason, firstly, you need to recognize that uh, this u tiny UV map is on vertex domain, but uh, in reality, UV map most of the time should be in face corner domain in order to work. So this tiny UV map is not in the correct domain. So why there is this tiny UV map? Where is that from? And so on and so forth. So let's go back to our initial geometry node tree. And we can take a look with the node tree. And basically this tiny UV map actually comes from all these kind of procedural geometry created within geometry nodes. So if I only view these grid outputs, then you can see there is a tiny UV map within face corner. However, when we try to instance this point, then obviously we are not instancing the grid. We are instancing our sphere on the grid. So what will be left on the 
So there's there's nothing <laughs> in the instance. But if we realize the instance, then you can see the face corner will only read the UV map from our sphere. And uh, this tiny UV map will be passed onto our realized instances. Okay, But it's not really relevant to us anymore because it's not a true UV map that we are going to use. On the other hand, if I'm not using this object info, I'm using a UV sphere as a procedural procedural geometry, then you will see in the face corner we have a tiny UV map. But in the vertex, uh, in the vertex we do not have a tiny UV map. <laughs> okay, it's fine. So in such a kind of case, what we are going to do is the same. We duplicate this object, apply the modify. Okay, there's no UV, no whatsoever. Goes to the attributes, we only see a tiny UV map, which is in the face corner domain. Then it's good, we can convert that to the UV map, and data UV is back. And uh, I think I've covered the most of that, the most basic parts. Uh, also to know that since uh, we're dealing with the UV map from our instances, it means if you're trying to use the object info, and then let's select the sphere, if your original object does not contain a UV map within the face corner, then obviously whatever we're doing will not really work. So for example, let's lock this interface and it goes to the sphere, and let's delete this UV map, and there's no UV map within the face corner, and even if you try to apply the modifier, there will not be any attribute being created, because there's no attribute. So I do not really care what you do, whether you're trying to work in with a face uh, a human model or a bird model or whatever other stuff, but you have to create a UV by your own. And I do not really care how you create your UV map. You can use Smart UV Project, Unwrap, Light Pack, Cube Projection, whatever. You can even mark the same by your own. But the entire goal is that you have to create a UV by yourself. For example, use a spherical projection and there will be some UV map in the face corner so that you can goes to apply the modifier and then convert all these kind of attributes and so on and so forth, okay? At last, we're going to discuss something about the curve. And I actually do not know the way to resolve that uh, in detail. So let's start with a curve circle, okay? And let's take a bevel curve so that we can um, speed up our process to create a UV. And let's increase the resolution to 16. You can download the preset from the link in the description for free, by the way. Okay, so now we have this kind of donut and I take a set of material. Uh, you may already realize that uh, there is no UV in face corner. That's why if you try to use the texture coordinates, it will not work. And even if you use the attribute, it will still won't work because there is no UV. Okay. So in this case, you have to create a UV by all. I've discussed in my UV tutorial previously, so you output this UV. You can name that whatever you want, it does not really matter. You can name that as a um, tutorial, just a TUT, and just type in TUT, uh, TUT. Then we have our UV back. It takes a little bit of time for the shader to compare, but uh, yeah, it's back. And I've discussed all these kind of uh, flaws in which you can just reset cyclic and so on and so forth. I'm not going into details talking about this issue, but uh, once this is going to be solved, we still have nothing in the face corner. Okay, so in this case, uh, what do you need to know is that your UV for curve currently does not work on face corner, but uh, when you're trying to export that, you probably need it to be face corner because that's how UV is working. And I don't actually know if our method will actually work or not. So we can try. So I'm going to apply this modifier. And within the attributes, there is a TUT. And it says in the vertex, can we actually convert this attribute into the UV map? And will it actually work? So now I have this plane 3. And where is this material? Yes, it's material. Let's delete the first empty socket. And try to use the UV texture coordinate. And it seems working because 
even if we use the texture coordinate it's still working then it's fine so you definitely can use the same method as we are doing with the face corner and the curve and so on okay so just the, again to remind you the difference between attributes the attribute can read any attribute whether it's in vertex edge face face corner curve control points points instances and so on it, it will always work but the texture coordinates will only read a specific data within UV map and uh, other places. Okay. So you have to do the conversion in order to make texture coordinate to recognize your parameter. Otherwise, it will not work. So within Blender, using attribute node will always give you no problem. But if you're trying to export that, you want to make sure that your texture is showing within, within this texture coordinate. Okay, so basically that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.